gosh, there's so much to feel petty about this week. There's so much to feel sane about. I feel like chickens are coming home to roost in a lot of cases. It feels really good to see that happen, to see justice served. Megan, Sanity Corner, where I feel petty. Um, as I sit here in my Caitlin Clark fever jersey, uh, there was good news out of the WNBA yesterday that all teams are going to have chartered flights now, which was a major Ooh. thing that they were fighting for. It's huge for player safety, play, player privacy. Like, we we saw the salaries. If, if that was your first um, – your first – like glance that there is a discrep a major discrepancy in pay and there's calls for the WNBA to level up. I think this is a massive like first step in that direction. There's a lot more eyes, there's a lot more money being spent and the bare minimum is that these players should have chartered flights to every single game. So if that is mm. happening, it's going to cost 25 million dollars. Good. Spend it. Thank you. <laughs> Um, and didn't they move venues for the Sparks Fever game? Yeah, so the Fever games have already sold out. Um, they, I, I mean, I have an interest in this because I'm from Indianapolis. They said Caitlin Clark, like, individually is going to bring $100 million to the Indianapolis economy, which is, like, in need of it. Um, and the Sparks Fever game, they're going to be playing at crypto now instead of, where, like, it's, it's becoming massive. People have really had an outcry of like, why are these specific? Why are these games not being televised? Angel Reese at the Met Gala, just like a lot of good things where people were like, oh, is this wave going to be able to like translate to the WNBA? And I, and I think it is, and I think it's it's hopeful that that's going to continue. Yeah, that is a really good sanity corner. Also, Cameron Brink has been kicking ass. Yes, uh, I mean these gals are just so incredible. So, so incredible. Yeah. WNBA is, oh, God. I want to go to the game, but then I don't I don't know if I'm going to be physically in. No, we're going to, we got to go. Sparks games are so fun. They're actually very, very kid-friendly, too. It's like all families there. Good. Um, Angel City, little girls everywhere. Like, I, I, I see sporting events. Listen, I went to a Lakers game pregnant, and everybody was like, move, fat bitch. Like, I'm not... <laughs> I'm not going to say they're all welcoming, but like I, I can give you a list of the sporting events that are that are welcoming to children and pregnant women. And they are women's sports. <laughs> Very interesting. OK, um, Alyssa, Sanity Corner or I Feel Petty? Guys, I feel petty. I feel petty. And I've, I've got a bit of a banger for our 300. Mm. I woke up this morning and my petty is directed at any woman considering voting for RFK right now. <laughs> Okay, guys, in 2010, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. was experiencing memory loss and mental fogginess so severe that a friend grew concerned he might have a brain tumor. Fast forward to the fact Mr. Kennedy, this doctor at New York Presbyterian Hospital, believed had a dead parasite in <gasps> his head. <laughs> that okay. Tracks. That okay. explains a lot. The okay. doctor believed that the abnormality seen on his scans was caused by a worm that got into his brain and <laughs> ate a portion of it and then died. <gasps> oh okay. I'm so Jewish that right now I'm like, oh, do I have a dead worm in my brain right now? <laughs> that would... Michaela, you do not. So a couple things I want to flag. Oh right, right now, RFK <laughs> is on the ballot in Utah, Michigan, Hawaii, California, and Delaware. Over the years, the New York Times continues to tell us, he has faced serious health issues, some previously undisclosed, including the apparent parasite. He has had atrial fibrillation. He has been hospital for, hospitalized four times for the episode. Aaron, this is the one I need specifically flag for you. About the same time he learned of the parasite, he said, he was also diagnosed with mercury poisoning, oh. most likely from ingesting too much fish containing the dangerous heavy metal. What? He said in a 2012 <laughs> deposition, I have cognitive problems, clearly. I have short-term and long-term memory loss. Here's why I needed to raise this. In no world, on no planet, would a woman be diagnosed with a parasite in her brain and be like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to run for president. No, nope. It is so <laughs> outrageous. The idea... That he, all these things happened 10 12 years ago. Years. <laughs> and he's like, and he woke up a year ago and was like, you know what I'm going to do? 
I'm going to run the fucking planet. That's what I'm going to do. Um, And I just think it's funny because we have talked so many times on this show about the study that Harvard Business Review did like 14 years ago based on a (laughs) Hewlett Packard internal uh, internal uh, diagnosis of some sort saying that men, when presented with a job, need to look at a list of requirements and meet 60% of them. And women need to meet 100% because they look at job requirements as actual requirements, not suggestions. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I just need to share that because the brain parasite was not the most outrageous part. It was deciding 10 years later he should run for president that is the outrageous part. Okay, two questions. A, is the worm qualified to be on the ballot in Utah, Michigan, California, and Hawaii? Because if not, is that grounds for rejecting RFK? Since they are one in the same, Robert F. Kennedy and Dead Worm. It, 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 it appears the worm uh, was removed, I guess. The worm I is his s- running mate. <laughs> um, I like to imagine the worm ate his brain and was like, I've been poisoned. Like his brain is poisonous <laughs> even to a the parasite. The worm tapped out. The oh. worm was like, I'm good. Wow. Second thing, could the mercury poisoning have contributed to his desire to run for president? Entirely possible. Oh, this wow. Is wildly mm-hmm. hilarious. Heavy, Maybe the worm ate the judgment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He- heavy metal point. The worm ate a brain tuna sandwich and died. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All had right. A, had a case of yeah. the ACDCs. It truly sounds the like. heavy metal brain. Heavy- <laughs> there, I, I did it. You did. You did <laughs> oh, my God. You Megan, did joke. Megan's going to beat me with this microphone. No, you know not. what? <laughs> Mercury poisoning in a generation of individuals with lead poisoning, mm-hmm. that's called being in the 1%. Lead Hell yeah. is is the the poisoning of the people. Mercury. Too much sushi. Too much sushi. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's like John Kerry with his windsurfing. Except you know, this guy's just eating tuna sandwiches or yeah. you know having albacore tuna. Um, okay, uh, Kieran, Sandy okay. corner. I feel Betty. Sa- well, okay, very quick, Sandy. Mr. And Mrs. Smith, watch it. Very good. Shocking. Mm. Shockingly good. Um, shocking. Okay, that's it. Mm-hmm. Um, I love the two leads, the two lead actors in that show. Yeah, it's well, I mean, it's like, like art. It's like, oh. it's like art. It's mm-hmm. like they disguised art in a spy thing. Okay. So it's slow at the top, but then watch it because it's very good. Nice. Uh, it made me genuinely laugh in places, which was shocking because I can't feel anything uh, at all, at all. <laughs> I can't feel anything at all, mm. and that hasn't changed. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, Michaela, mm-hmm. finish us off. Okay. So um, I have a petty, and then I have a quickie, Sandy. But uh, because, you know, let's leave on a good note. But my petty is that, you know, I've been very fortunate in that when I travel, it's usually on someone else's dime. And thankfully, the only thing my union has gotten right is that they fly you first or business class. And so I've been had quite the luxury. When I fly on my own dime, which I've been doing a lot lately, (laughs) it's, it's economy plus all the way so i choose like what is going to be i'm now like an aficionado on what is the best economy plus ticket you can get right thank goodness i need this information okay well it it it, it's been jet blue like overall like you get a tv set you can you know all the entertainment's there the seats are relatively distanced and 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 they're cheap they're cheap tickets you know it's like a cheap airline the last few times I've flown JetBlue, they, <laughs> the plane has been very late, but also you get on the plane, and as soon as you get on the plane and you sit down, and you're like, okay, great, I'm, I'm a nervous flyer, so I'm just going to start watching my crap TV, which is usually couples therapy, and call it a day. Mm-hmm. And um, it's not, that's not crap. It's actually high-end crap. <laughs> anyway, but they consistently, you get on the plane, and they say, unfortunately, uh, our TVs are not working. And there used to be a time where, like, if you chose an airline because of this amenity, which is, like, this free TV that you were going to watch, then if it didn't work, they would give you a voucher for, like, 50 bucks or something like that. Because it kind of blows the entire reason that you chose this airline that's consistently late. So <laughs> I, so I asked the, the flight attendant who was charging me for my drinks, after I'm sitting there in like total quiet darkness. And I said, um, not even a free drink? Like the TV's not even working, can I at least get drunk? And she <laughs> said, um, you can go online and, and talk to them. 
So just as on a lark, I was was trying to distract myself and I, I chatted with them and the response was, our policies have changed as of January 1st. From now on, while we offer, you know, TV, you know, media and free whatever, it, it's not guaranteed. And I'm like, wait, <gasps> so you offer something, but you don't guarantee it. So basically, I can just keep flying you and never get this thing because you've, quote unquote, not never guaranteed it. What the shit is that? <laughs> what like like I, I, you know I we offer you internet, but we cannot guarantee you will have internet, and therefore if you don't have internet, sucks for you. Mm -hmm. Like no, I chose this because you have internet. Like what is that? By the way, they had internet. Like I could have gone online and watched something, but it wouldn't have been. Free. I don't know why the TV didn't work. I think they just didn't feel like it airlines yeah. hate us really quick before you yell i just want to co-sign what the shit yeah yeah oh so good what the shit is such a good expression <laughs> i do have a i do have an aunt who says that all the time i don't know what the shit, <laughs> what the shit, what the shit. and i was like i love what the shit that is Can't great yeah let's make what the, shit. the next six years are the six years of what the shit what the shit my quick sanny is and this is where i think ai would come in really really usefully <laughs> is I needed to go through every Hysteria podcast and pull out Aaron's nicknames for shitty people. <laughs> like, you are so extraordinarily good at nicknames for crappy people. <laughs> and that is my Sani. Thank you, you so much. You are my Sani. Um, if you like my nicknames for crappy people, you would love our new YouTube series, This Fucking Guy. 